our shapes and styles, sharing our adventures and happy smiles. Climb aboard and let's get started. Our pets, our pets, we are the Art Pets. Hi. Are you ready for part three of how to paint a cute kitten? Yay! I hope you enjoyed doing your part two. Today I'm going to show you how to finish Fluffy by adding in some details and also some lights, darks and highlights. This can be a tricky part as we bring all of the elements together. So take your time and have fun. Let's get started. Now. As before, we have our phthalo blue, our medium yellow, our crimson red, and our titanium white. And I've already pre-mixed some of the dark colour that I'm going to work with, which is a combination of the three primary colours, the blue, the red, and a small amount of yellow. And as we talked about in the last video, that's what's known as a natural black. It's not quite as dense as black, but it has just a little bit more softness and gentleness to it. I'm going to take my small little brush, so we have the small little detailing brush here, and I am going to take a small amount of that darkness and I'm going to start with the eyes. Now, I'm going to start over here on the left eye, just touching up, because you may remember I was saying in the last video that we lost a little bit of the strength of the outline in that when I was doing my softness and my layering before that. So I'm going to touch up on the outline, just a little bit there. Give it the shaping into that space, so just around the iris you can see a little bit more of an outline. Then the pupil, which is quite dark, but it's not an absolute shape. I was saying before that it has a sort of diamond shape to it, and that's okay. Our pointy egg shape. Just blocking some of that dark, but I'm not filling it in because there's some light reflecting on that, and I want to leave a little bit of softness around the edges of that. Remember what I said before, that when you're painting, it's all about trying to let some of what went before in the previous layers come through. So we don't just want to block in everything too heavily. At this stage, we're trying to bring everything together so we want to just try and utilise what we've already put down and just add to it, but not completely repaint it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Now, this right eye as we look at it, the same thing, outlining the eye lids and the iris itself. Just giving a little bit more strength. And, of course, if you felt you wanted to use slightly different colours to mine, by all means feel free to do that. And once again, the pupil and even though I know what the shape is, it's not quite what I see. It's a little bit softened and misshapen because of the way the light reflects in on it a little bit. And so I'm just trying to show that. There's a beautiful feeling of curiosity in Fluffy's eyes, and that's also something we're trying to capture. And then the shadows down around here. From there, I'm going to just come back into the pattern and just dab in little bits of darkness into that. Now, as I said also before, Trying to copy something crooked is quite difficult. The pattern itself is very uneven, so it's quite a difficult pattern to copy, so we don't have to be quite the same. We can put in our own interpretation of the pattern, and that'll be perfectly fine. There. Into those little spaces here, and again over on the left-hand side as we look at it, coming out from the eye. And we did create, the last time we did this, we got some lovely soft fluffy edges. And it's important that we keep that. So we're just strengthening some of the colours inside and adding one or two little bit extras. But we're not completely doing over everything. Just tapping in. And the most important thing as well at this stage is to remember not to overpaint. We've captured a lot in the freedom that we put into stage one and stage two. And it's important to try and hold on to that. It would be very easy now to start putting in too much detail and end up being too fiddly and too detailed. And in doing that, we could lose that beautiful fluffiness and softness that we have. And that, of course, is the priority for you to keep. And for me, of course, too. Just touch up on some of the darks. You can see the way the pattern here rounds slightly up towards the ears. So I'm just going to make that stand out a little bit more there. Just little taps. And I say tapping because I'm just tapping in the brush. I'm not being too heavy-handed. Just very gentle little strokes to give a little bit more depth and a little bit more detail into our painting. I have to say, I'm very pleased with how this is coming along. And I think 
Choosing to do a painting of Fluffy was a very good idea, Captain Puppy Fluff. I think I did very well in choosing this. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. I think it's just such a lovely painting to do. Such a cute painting to do. There. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of my blue, my phthalo blue, without washing my brush about it, and that's it. Add a small touch of white, and I'm making a slightly darker greyish blue because you can see this little bit of shadow particularly on the left eye as we look at it so I want to dull that down a little so the red with a small touch of yellow just and a small touch of white see how that works I'm going to just test that and see a bit too dark so I'm going to come back in with a touch more white and a little bit more yellow and red I want to give it a slightly more greyish blue feeling so if it is too much blue it is just a bit a bit too bright so I'm going to just tone it down a little bit a little bit of yellow and red oh yes better I'm happy with that colour just touch that in there break up the side of the pupil so it's not too rigid to that space there's a small touch in here but nothing too much then we have a little bit more brightness and you can see that on the right hand side a little bit of light there it's reflecting off perhaps a window or a ceiling light that was in the room at the time that this photograph was taken a little bit in here I'm going to mix that around a bit more and put in a softer blue just around here to help give the impression of the roundness of the iris that is not flat and there's little bits of unevenness throughout the shaping of the iris and the same over here over on the left eye I'm seeing just a tiny little bit of soft colouring with a very soft slightly yellowy blue almost just touching in around here now it's important to say that not everybody sees colour exactly the same way. Um, I know that on Planet Fluff, when I was teaching the Fluffy Kids, I discovered this. I used to think that everybody saw colour in the same way, but now I've realised that we all see colour slightly differently. And particularly when it comes to the likes of greys and violets and blues, people can sometimes see them with a slight variation. So that's okay. You put in your interpretation of the colour that you see, and it'll still work out. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine, as I said. I'm back in with more brightness again, just tapping in to get a little bit more sparkle on the eye there. And also on this left eye, just tapping in a little, getting a little bit more sparkle on that. And we were just reflecting light on that. There's a little bit of softness just underneath the eyelid here. And there's a little bit of softness just in the corner of the eye there. And also here. It's a bit too bright, so I'm just going to tone that a little into that space and a little bit more brightness again here the colours when you put them down first can seem either bright or dark and then you can find sometimes they tend to dry just a little bit flatter in which case we just replenish and touch back up again into the space with a little bit of whatever we need to do be it a touch of light or a touch of dark just to get the feeling we're looking for into that area there now while I have that colour I'm going to take some red with it and I'm going to make a slightly pinky tone because you can see there's a bit of shaping down around the mouth which I don't yet have and I'm going to use that to indicate so we can see there's the um, nostrils coming down and then there's a little bit of softness just below that in the middle of the mouth area here and it's quite reddish so I'm going to go a little bit more ready there so I make that so where I have it quite dark at the moment I'm going to soften that by putting in what is a dark pink so just a little bit more red and you can see I'm just going in very gently and very slowly and just testing out the colour as I go because I don't want to be too immediate so as before small amounts of colour as you go along works much more effectively just tap in mm -hmm. there just to dull that down a little give that a little bit of warmth and there now I'm going to go back to that slightly darker pink and I'm just going to show the idea of Fluffy's mouth just coming down very gently here to the left and also to the right. Now it's not a severe line because it's all very soft so what we want to try is just put in the idea of the line and then very gently break it down or blend it down a little just to give a little bit of softness into that space. And you can see there seems to be over here a little bit more shadow down into the background. I'm not going to show that. And also here. Now, that's some of that pinky red comes up. Actually, I'm going to wash my brush because the blue that's on my brush is now dulling down my pink, so I want a little bit more purity. So I'm just going to swirl my brush around, take off all the heavy colour, go back into my pinky tone. So now using just the red, that's not fully dry, the red and the white. 
you can see, just get a little bit more warmth. Just put that in here, still not strong enough. Got the, the um, little touch of light pink here, lovely, much better. And just little touches around here. Now you can see that the light tan or light brown or light grey, depending on what colour you see, is more visible on the left than the right, whereas I have a lot of pink, but when I put in my lights, I'm going to soften that down. So I'm aware that I'm going to be changing some of that, so I'm not doing too much on that for the moment. So I'm going to leave them out like that, and let's see what sort of effect putting in the other lighter colours has on that before we go back and do any more on that space. Now from there, I'm going to rinse off my brush, and I'm going to take a slightly larger brush than that one there, so I'm going to take one that has not quite the same points. You can see it's a wee bit fluffy, but it's not quite as um, loose as the first one we used to block in. And I'm going to use just to tap in some of those soft colours. So now I'm coming back in, and I'm going to take a little bit of yellow with my red, tone it down a little, I don't want to be too bright, and I'm going to test that. You can see some lovely light around the eyes, and I'm going to put in a little bit of that light just to try and pick up some of that. And again, I'm not using any water, I'm using just the paint straight from the tube mixed together so that it has a certain amount of strength because if I thin it too much of water it won't have that strength and it's important that we have that and we're able to maintain that strength just tap that around here and the same on the underside and this is a nice brush you can see it's not too pointed so it's holding its fluffiness if you like just around the eye there you can see some of that comes up and just tapping in with the same technique I showed you earlier where you just let the brush skim across the surface, get that lovely fluffiness. And up into the end, I'm seeing a little bit of that light, just up there. So it links to that line down around the eyes. You can see those colours are already drying down a little, so I may come back in and brighten those up again. But I don't want to be too quick, so I'm going to wait, I'm going to take my time, mix up more colour. I'm going to just test out the colour down around here. Start to bring that out a little there. It's a bit too yellowy, so I'm going to put a little bit more white in that. Just touch that in. So I want to shape up the nostril a little. I want to get a feeling of the shaping of that there. Just tapping up here and that leads out into this space here. And the same on the opposite side of the nostril, just on the left as we look at it. There's a little bit of light in here. And you can see the shaping of the nose starting to come out. It's probably a little bit too strong. And again, I come in and I'm tone that down. I'm just tapping in with the brush to get some of that softness into that space. There's a little bit of softness down here. Just tap in there as well. Taking off some of the paint from the brush and just touch off some water. Just take the dry brush and just tap in some here and there. Now with that colour, I'm going to go up here. Start bringing in, you can see the lovely bright colours that we see here and also here. Now what I've done is I'm flattening my brush a bit like a blade. So you can see it's much flatter now. When I turn to the side, it's very narrow. When I turn it this way, it's flat. And I'm using that just to get some of the longer, narrow feelings of just individual hairiness here and there showing through. You can see there's quite a gap between the, the line on the right and the line just to the left of that. So I have quite a darkness in there. So I'm going to bring that up a little. So just tap in with this little bits. Just to show that. As I said, my pattern doesn't have to be exactly the same. But I'm just trying to be a little bit more particular in certain parts, get a little bit more feeling into it. And then we just tap in the same between the pattern over here, using the flat or the blade of the brush, as I said, which is the flat part. Down in through the end, just tapping little bits here and there, and here and there. The same over on the left hand side, we have some of those lights showing up around here. Just tap in again. And you can see they're softening down. Nicely. And I can see the lights coming up just around the edging here. So I want to bring that up into the ear. Those spaces there and the same up here. And there's some lovely little fluffy bits. You may remember when we did the drawing. We come up and at the end of the drawing we put in all these lovely fluffy little touches with the pencil to get that sense of hairiness. And it's important that you're putting these in, they're very light. You can see I'm using the blade of the brush very, very gently. I don't want these to be too heavy because they could completely overtake and a few along the outside. Here and there. And the same here. And you can see you can only do maybe two or three strokes and then you have to go back and flatten the brush. Otherwise, you end up with the hair starting to get very wide and the lines that you have going in much wider, which is not what you want to have happen. And then 
a few coming down here. Just over there. Now, there is a lovely touch of blue here and here in the ears. Now, I was saying that may be reflecting something in the room or probably from the sky. But I put those in at the beginning at the wash stage, but I've kind of taken them out a little softened down. So I'm going to put some of those back in because I think they add a lovely sense of excitement into this part of the head. Just block those in there. And they add a little bit more brightness up to this part. And this is a combination of both the flat of the brush and the blade that I was talking to you about. Get that. Get that there. And the same on the left hand side. You can see that lovely brightness. And once more, just there's a lovely little touch just catching here. On the left, just into the ear. And then, of course, up onto the ear. And just very gently skimming with the brush. I'm hardly touching the surface of my paint with the brush. So you need only the tiniest bit of pressure so they get that brightness and that gentleness at the same time. Otherwise, I'd end up being too heavy and I get a big blob of blue, which is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for softness in here to this space. Once more, it's drying down a little, so I'm going to come back and then add a highlight to that. So I've put in a light blue, and I'm adding some more white to my blue, and I'm just going to highlight that again with a slightly brighter blue. Can you see the way it goes a little bit brighter? And then just occasionally here and there, just to bring that up a little lovely. And the same once more on this side. And I love the way the touch of blue adds a little bit of excitement and colour because it complements the darts as well as the medium colours and, of course, that pinkishness that we've been dealing with already just tapping in around here. Now, from there, just on the snout, just on the tiny little nose, the fluffy house, you can see there's a little bit more brightness because the nose is coming out towards us, so it's catching more light. So I'm going to put in, starting with my brighter blue, I'm going to put in some of that here. I don't want to go in too quickly with my light because, again, it can be too heavy, so I'm going to layer up just very slightly. So just take that. I'm going to just soften. You can see the top of the nose really, really soft. We talked about that shape before when we were doing the drawing, and it's called, that's right, concave, because concave goes inwards and that's going inwards this way adding a little bit more white to that i'm going to just on the left hand side i can see the bit brighter tap in a little bit more and again i'm using the flat of my brush just trying to get that softness and that wispiness the nose will be very very gentle just get that softness into that space there and we don't want it too harsh and a touch graduate that back into just here so a little bit of soft shadow just actually i'm going to touch up a little bit more on the brightness around here just tap, tap in there. Just to ease that in there. And um, just around this eye here, a tiny bit more brightness. Just even that out. And I think I will probably end up going back in and touching up the outlines on the eyes again. That's okay. And just a little bit more here. Just to bring up the brightness into that space. A little bit more around here. And also once again there. Now, from there, um, I think the nose is a bit too uh, bright and it's pink. It's too reddy red. So I'm going to just soften it. As you can see it's a little bit soft there. But just before I do that, I see a bit of a bright highlight. Touch here and a touch more yellow to that colour. And add a little bit of brightness just Still a bit too grey and a touch of yellow and red to warm it up a little. Get that little bit brightness there and tap in a little bit here. And while I have that colour, once more I'm coming up and just adding little bits along there. And also up here. In between. So they were really showing the idea that the sunlight or the light from the window at the door, I think this photograph was taken beside the door, the laundry basket was beside the door and Fluffy's in the laundry basket. I think that's what Molly told me. And um, so the light from the door is catching the top of Fluffy's head and it's important just to show that. And while we have that, can you see that beautiful highlight that goes along the ears? So once again, we're going to start with this colour, which is the white, with some ochre and red and a tiny bit of blue. And I'm going to put in a lower line of that first and then if needs be, put in a brighter colour note. And I'm going to tap that in around the ear, and again I'm using the word tapping because I'm not trying to have a pure outline. Because if it's too harsh, it looks too stuck on. And we want it to integrate with the softness that we've put in elsewhere. And we know that this will dry down, and it may well be bright enough. And if not, we can go back on it again. Just the same on the right ear as we look at it. Just that beautiful highlight along there. Just to get that extra bit of brightness and make sure that ear is round, because you can see it's quite rounded on the top. 
some of that there showing through. Okay, so just very gently as you can see it's starting to soften down just a little already. So I might come back in and add a little bit more white to that again while it's wet and take advantage of the fact it's wet. Just touch up on that, like so. Just here and there, get that extra out. Once again, I'm going to flatten that brush. Just put in one or two little wispy bits. I think I'll also now brighten up here again, just into that a little. I'm going to do a tiny little touch into the light on my eye here, and also just a tiny touch there, just to pick up on that once more. Now, so now taking a small touch of red in here to get that slightly softer pink that we're talking about for the nose, not too much, and just tap it in around here just to, to bridge the gap between the softness of the highlight there and just along the top here. You can see just in the centre down towards the mouth it's a little bit stronger and the rest is quite soft and that's what we're looking to try and capture is that softness. Soften down the nostril where I'm at it. Oh, that reminds me. I told you before about how kittens have nose prints that are completely unique. Well, myself and Princess Kitty decided to try it out and do a print of our noses. Princess said she will show you the result in her video on how to draw a cute puppy. All I'm saying is that it was lots of fun. We laughed so much. I'm going to dry off that off my cloth. And with just a little bit that's on my brush, I'm going to just soften down around the mouth, just tapping around there to soften down that line so that you can see it's quite soft here and I want that furriness onto the line so I don't want to be too rigid. Just going to dry off the brush again and use some of the, the, the uh, lighter colour that I see around here just to break that down a little so it doesn't look too set and too rigid. Just to get that little bit of softness, it softens there a little bit just around here so that we can still see some suggestion of the line but not too rigidly and the same over here into that space. And now we're going to have our finishing touches. So I'm just going to go back to my small brush and not unlike I've just done with my slightly bigger brush, I'm going to use the blade of my small brush. So I'm going to take some white and I'm going to flatten it out onto the small brush. So once again, you can see that we have, I'll show it against the dark, that's it when it's flat and when I turn it to the side you can see it's very narrow, that's called the blade of the brush and I'm going to use that to put in the little whiskers that Fluffy has. So you can see now, there's a couple here on the left hand side and to do this you need to lean really gently and just do one at a time, we don't have too many. And then replenish the brush and then do a second one, and a third one, little touches and I'm using pure white because it'll show up a little bit more and it'll also dry a little bit darker then on the opposite side and just barely touching the top of the painting. <laughs> just to touch up very gently a little bit of light onto the top of the nose there. I'm going to come in with a little bit more brightness. I think the highlight here is a little bit stronger than I've made it. So I'm going to come in and make that a little bit brighter because we said before the light's coming in from the left hand side so that's catching more light than anywhere else. I'm going to pick up on a little bit of brightness in there using the small brush just very gently just tapping in. And a slightly softer version with a little bit of blue just in here again using the blade of the brush just tapping in just into those spaces there that just gets a little bit of extra softness in on top of Fluffy's left ear or the right one as we look at it and I'm going to just take a tiny bit more yellow it's quite greeny add a little bit of red and one or two more little fluffy bits along the top Make sure that's the blade of the brush I'm using. Now, I had thought that I might um, do something on the background, but I've decided I like the background as it is. In When I did the second stage, I did it in a very textural fashion, and I'm just going to leave that feeling of texture sit there. You can see some of the works coming through, and I like that. And so, now, all we need to do is to sign it. So, Captain... Fluffy. Fluff. 
And as with my drawings, I like to pose but a little heart because when I enjoy something, I like to show it. But a little heart and then. Now, as before, thank you Fluffy. Thank you for being such a wonderful model and thank you for making such a beautiful painting. I had so much fun painting you and I hope that all the boys and girls here on Planet Earth also have the same fun copying you. And as Princess Kitty did with uh, Matilda, all that remains now is to put a little mount on it and just to show you how it looks when it's finished off. So I'm going to move these bits and pieces away. Now, I've cleared away all the bits and pieces of my materials away from the painting of Fluffy and I'm now just going to put the mount that I have on top of that just to give it a sense of finish and presentation. A simple little cream mount I have and I just put that on the outside and there we have Fluffy. Our painting in acrylic of Fluffy a Cute Kitten. Wow, wow, wow. I've had the best time ever painting Fluffy. I hope you're having as much fun and feel you're learning too. Enjoy finishing your painting and don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with our latest art adventures. Princess Kitten Fluff will be back soon with some new videos showing you how to draw and paint a cute puppy. Until then, have lots of fun, colourful art adventures. See you soon. Bye for now. Bye.